Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you're here. I'm super excited to be bringing you another video as a guest designer for Whimsy Stamps this month. This project is part of a giveaway video hop where designers will be creating projects featuring the Slimline Cityscape die set. You'll have a chance to win a $25 gift certificate to Whimsy Stamps, so be sure to stick around to find out how to enter. For my project, I'll be sharing this interactive Halloween shadow box card using a couple of different die sets from Whimsy Stamps and the little wolf and ghost elements move. Now before we get started, I'd love it if you'd click that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Some of the products I'll be using for this project include the haunted paper pad, which has some spooktacular Halloween scenes. And I'm only showing you a couple here, but I've picked out the ones that would work best for this shadow box card. I'm gonna go with this last one here that has the yellow moon and green sky with the bats. And I'm also gonna be using some heavyweight cardstock in yellow, white, and black. I'll be using the Slimline Cityscape die set to add to the background of the card to create the spooky scene. I was thinking of the movie An American Werewolf in London as my inspiration. And the die cuts out the buildings with windows and it has an outline die where you can add it to the back that makes it easy to add color to the windows. I'm also using one of the ghosts from the Booth die set and the wolf from the Monster Parade die set to create the window on the shadow box i'm using the connected rectangle frame die as well as the happy halloween word dies so here you can see what it looks like when it comes out of the envelope it's a flat a2 size card and as soon as you take it out of the envelope it pops up because of the shadow box feature so let's get started you will need two pieces of heavyweight cardstock to build the card base that each measure six and a quarter inches by five and a half inches tall the overall size of this portrait card is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I use Serio black cardstock since it's 104 pounds and super dark black. Now I'm using one of the ends that I cut off to cut out the buildings for the cityscape using my die cutting machine. And I'm using the outline die on a piece of yellow cardstock to place behind it. This will eventually be trimmed down to be slightly smaller than four and a quarter inches so that I can place it on my background. Now here I'm just using the dye brush to remove all of the tiny window pieces. This makes this process go so much faster and it makes it so much easier. Next, I'm placing the longer side in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score it at half an inch and one inch on each end on both pieces. So I'll rotate the cardstock and repeat the scoring process. And this is what's gonna give the card dimension. You want to make sure you're using heavyweight cardstock for this because you want the walls of your shadow box to have strength. Now each of these pieces, I'm taking my bone folder and I'm folding it along those score lines and you end up with a zigzag piece on each side. This will be like the springs that make your card pop up when you take it out of the envelope. And I'll do the same exact thing on the other piece. So basically we'll glue these little flaps together on the edge and that's what forms your shadow box. Now this card won't open but you can write your message on the back once we add some white card stock and the card will be able to stand up so your recipient can place it on display. So now we need to cut out the window for the front of the card and I'm using the connected rectangle die but you really could use whatever shape you want to use here to create the window. So now that my hole is cut out of the box, I have this rectangle piece that I need to be able to attach back on here, but since there's nothing to attach it to, I'll have to create a window using a piece of acetate. So I've trimmed down this acetate to be four inches by five and a quarter inches. And next I'm taking the piece of pattern paper from the haunted paper pad, and I wanna center the moon to fit on the back piece. So I'm cutting about an inch off of each side and, about, and then about a half of an inch from the bottom. So as long as it fits in the back part of the shadow box and you can still see it when you look through the window, that's what you're going for. So next I'm trimming down the city shapes to be slightly smaller than four and a quarter and then gluing these together. And while that dries, I'm gonna glue the background into the back of the shadow box. And then I'll be taking the acetate piece and I'm gonna glue that to the back side of the front piece of the shadow box. Now 
Now I wanted to give the rectangle frames a little bit of dimension, so I decided to take a piece of glossy black cardstock and I cut out another frame and I'll glue these two together. Now because the glossy cardstock has a white core, you can see the white when you tilt it sideways and I didn't want that. So here I'm just taking my black Copic marker and I'm running it along all of the edges. Next, I'm using the Happy Halloween Word Dies to cut out my sentiment out of some yellow cardstock. And then I'm also going to cut out the wolf and some ghosts using some white cardstock. Now, I did cut the sentiments out three times so that I could layer those up. And at this point, I wasn't sure which ghost I was going to use, so I cut them all out twice. And I also cut out two pieces of the wolf. I colored the wolf with some Copic markers off camera. And now I'm taking the scrap piece of acetate that I cut off earlier and I'm cutting some quarter inch strips to use for the moving elements. So they're about a quarter by three and a half inches. So notice I have two die cuts of the wolf and two of the ghost. One is going to be used for the front side of the acetate strip and the other plain white die cut is going to be glued to the back side. So here I'm um, just trying to figure out placement. And I've also lost the piece of acetate trying to find it. There it is. <laughs> okay, so um, again, you want to put, you want to sandwich the acetate strip between the two pieces. And so here I'm just adding some liquid glue. Let me find one that's actually open. Here we go. Adding some liquid glue with a fine tip to the back side of my wolf. And then I'm gluing the two pieces together. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the ghost. I glued the three die cut words together so that they would be layered and it would give it some dimension. And then I glued in the layered cityscape to the background and I made sure that it was placed correctly where you can see it through the window and it wasn't too far down. And so now it's time to add the wolf and the ghost that will move when the card pops up. And it kind of looks like they're floating around when you open the card and pull on the ends. So I'm just carefully trying to figure out placement for this wolf here. I positioned the acetate piece where it needed to go to make the wolf look like he's walking through the city streets. So I'm using a piece of double-sided tape to hold it in place and I'm attaching the end of the acetate piece to the back side of the front flap on the left. Now I struggled a little bit with this because this tape is super sticky and I wanted to make sure that it was in the right spot. I just I had to adjust it a few times. And so then next I did the same thing for the ghost. So here I'm just making sure that that rectangle frame isn't going to cover up the, uh, the wolf in any way. So I did have to move him up just a tad. So I'm going to do the same thing for the ghost, except I'm going to have him floating in from the other side of the card. So once both of the floating pieces were in the right spot, and I've got them both taped down using this double-sided tape, I removed the backing from from that and then I'm gonna add some liquid glue so that we can put this together but a little bit of advice before you put it together if there's something else you want to add to your background you want to do that first before gluing the flaps together because once you do that the card is closed so to glue this together I'm using some Gina K connect liquid glue because it's a pretty strong glue and it will allow me to move it until it's lined up exactly how I want it. So after making sure I had everything lined up correctly, I lined up the flaps and pressed down firmly to make sure that they were attached real good. The acetate pieces are sandwiched between the flap. I glued the sentiment and the connected rectangle frames to the front of the card and I cut off the excess acetate strips using my scissors. Now, there were a couple of places that the glue seeped out and I was just trying to scratch it off of the acetate but I used an adhesive eraser later off camera for this and it worked great. So and finally I am adding a sheet of white four by five and a quarter inch cardstock to the back so that I'll have a place to write my message and here is the finished card. Again, I'll show you what it looks like in the envelope and then how it looks once it's popped out. 
these little pieces inside move back and forth as you pull on the flaps on the end and I think this is a really neat interactive card and it was pretty easy to make you could use many different things on this type of card you could create your own background rather than using pattern paper you could stamp and color different floating images for the inside of the card and you can use different shapes to cut out the window but I really liked combining the different Halloween elements from the different sets and I love how this turned out let me know what you think in the comments below Remember, commenting on each of the videos in the hop is how you will enter the giveaway to win a $25 gift certificate to Whimsy Stamps. For more information on the products seen in this video, click on the links directly below to head over to the Whimsy Stamps website to check it out. I appreciate you so much for spending time with me today. If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I hope you'll click on that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up to like this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful crafty day. See you again soon.